In this part, I want to talk about the concept of negative pressure. This idea is one of the weirder aspects of water relations. The fact that in actively transpiring vascular plants, water exists at pressures below the vapor pressure of water. So let me elaborate on that a little bit. What I'm showing here is a number line showing a range of pressures. So going along here, basically atmospheric pressure that we exist at here uh, at sea level, atmospheric pressure is positive 0 0.1 megapascals. Uh, if you look at the older literature, basically that's one bar. So one bar is uh, atmospheric pressure. The vapor pressure of water is positive 0 0.0023 megapascals. What that means is that um, this is the pressure below which liquid water becomes a gas. In other words, if liquid water is in a vessel and its pressure is lowered below positive 0 0.0023 megapascals, it will boil. So I'm going to show you an example of that. Molecules. And once I drive out all the gas molecules, there'll be less molecules to collide with the surface, less force pushing down the surface, and I should achieve uh, a maximum rate of evaporation called boiling. So you can actually see it starting to happen now, and there's our boiling. Now watch, take care so of what you can see uh, is that this demo on YouTube, once I drive out all the gas molecules, the pressure chamber, there'll be less molecules to collide with the surface, it. less force the pushing down the, the water. surface, see the water's about and I should achieve uh, a maximum rate of evaporation for boiling. So you can actually see it starting to happen lowers, now, and there's our boiling. That water starts to boil. That's now watch, take point. careful. Uh, Due to lowering the pressure, in that vessel, once I drive out molecules, all the gas molecules, megapascals. there'll be less molecules to collide yeah. with the so surface, less force the pushing down the surface, below the vessel and pressure, I should achieve that water uh, a maximum rate of evaporation called boiling. So you can actually see it starting to happen to now, and there's our boiling. Now watch, take careful. Uh, so at pressures below this level, water, liquid water, should boil. But it doesn't. Okay, we know that, for instance, the water potential of moist soils about negative 0 0.05. We know that a transpiring temperate tree might have a water potential of, of magnitude about minus two megapascals. And some desert plants can have water potentials down to maybe minus five megapascals. Not only are those water potentials, and, and one way to think about this, this is psi p in the xylem. So that's the pressure potential in the xylem. Not only is it below the vapor pressure of water, it's negative. So it's very much below. So this is really an unusual situation in nature. Xylem is probably one of the few places in nature where water exists in a liquid state below its vapor pressure. So what that means, we know the water in xylem is liquid. So liquid water in xylem exists in a metastable state.
In other words, due to its pressure, it should be gas, but it's not, it's liquid. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So how? How is water maintained in that metastable state? Well, first, there are no air bubbles in the water. Okay, usually for a phase change to happen, there has to be a nucleating point. So for instance, when you boil water on your stove, where do you first see the bubbles form? You first see the bubbles form along the bottom of the pan. That's where the phase change is occurring from liquid to, to vapor. And that's happening because there's little microscopic cracks in the metal of the pan, and there's actually an air-water interface in, the, in that crack. And that is nucleating the phase change at that point. In water in xylem, that water is degassed, so there's no bubbles or dissolved gases in that water, so there's no nucleation points. That keeps that phase change from happen, happening. In addition, there's adhesion of water to the cell walls, and that may help, may also help stabilize the water column. But the main point is, is the lack of nucleating points for that phase change to happen. So that enables the water in xylem to be maintained in a metastable liquid state at pressures far below the vapor pressure, the boiling point essentially of water. Now this existence of water at negative pressures periodically causes problems for the idea of cohesion tension, which basically, and I'll talk about cohesion tension in a minute, but in order for it to work, water has to exist at negative pressures in the xylems. And periodically, that upsets people because especially physicists and, and chemists um, say, well, water can't exist below its vapor pressure in a liquid state. So there must be some other explanation for water transport in the xylem. And they invoke other mechanisms of water transport which don't require negative pressures in the xylem. Suffice it to say, over the years, uh, the evidence continues to support cohesion tension and the existence of negative pressures in the xylem. But it is strange. It is a strange situation. It's actually, I think, one of the wonderful things about water relations in trees is the existence of these negative pressures. So just to sort of drive this home, let's think about a redwood tree. This is another great drawing by Robert Van Pelt of uh, Coast Redwood. This one's 332 feet tall, so it's more than 100 meters tall. We know that water is pulled up this tree all the way to the top. Um, and in order for that to happen, water potentials in the xylem have to be negative. Um, but when we look at, for instance, the maximum suction pump lift, if you go and into a pump catalog and buy a water pump that pulls water, they will list the maximum lift. And the maximum suction pump lift is 25 feet. So you cannot buy a suction pump that can pull water any more than 25 feet. Yet trees can pull water much greater distances. So, and that's because trees can maintain water at those negative water potentials. Whereas when a suction pump 
reaches that maximum lift against gravity, and I'll show you the math in a minute, at that point, it's reached the vapor pressure of water, and that water will cavitate. It will boil. So if the maximum suction pump lift is 25 feet, how do we get water out of wells or pump it up hills higher than 25 feet? We push it. When we pull, when we get water out of a deep well, the pump is at the bottom. If you've had, for instance, if you live in a rural area and you have a well on your property and you've ever seen them repair the pump, they have to pull all the pipe out of the well and the pump is attached to the bottom of the pipe and pushes the water up out of the well. Similarly, when water is transported um, in a municipal water system, it's not pulled by suction, it's pushed by pressure using pumps. So suction pumps have inherent limitations due to that fact that um, you can only generate a pressure difference enough between atmospheric and the vapor pressure of water. And I'll show you that math here on the next slide. So let's do the math for why a suction pump can only lift water about 25 feet. You're saying, why are we talking about suction pumps? Really, because essentially water transport in trees is by suction. It's by the cre it happens because there's a creation of a pressure difference in the xylem. So we can think of water movement is in trees as essentially a big suction pump. But let's look at a man-made suction pump. That happens, let's say this is the pump, and this is a pipe. And that pipe is in the water here. That water at the pipe inlet is at a pressure of atmospheric pressure, 0 0.1 megapascals. This suction pump lifts water by creating a pressure difference. Okay? Lifts water by creating A pressure difference. Okay, so it lowers the pressure up here at the top. So that pressure difference causes water to flow towards the pump. So we can calculate what the maximum pressure difference is. So let's say the pressure up here at the pump is plus 0 0.05. That will allow water to flow up in that direction. But when the pressure in this pump reaches 0 0.05, megapascals, at that point, the water in the pipe will boil because this is, the vapor, this is the vapor pressure of water, okay? So what that means is is that this is the biggest pressure difference that you can generate before water boils. So what is that pressure difference? So the pressure difference, let me, um, okay, so the maximum pressure difference equals that atmospheric pressure, 0 0.1 megapascals, minus that vapor pressure, pressure, which is basically the lowest that pump pressure can go before cavitation happens. So that difference, the biggest pressure difference then, when you subtract those two, is 0 0.0977 megapascals, okay? So if you remember, the 
the gravitational potential, basically to lift water, you need to generate 0 0.1 megapascals per 10 meters of height, or 0 0.01 megapascals per meter. So if we take that pressure difference, 0 0.0, 977 megapascals and divide it by 0 0.01 megapascals per meter. Okay. Those megapascals cancel out. The units end up being meters, okay? And we end up with 9.77 meters. So a pressure difference of 0 0.0977 megapascals will enable you to lift water 9.77 meters. That's about 32 feet, okay? No system is perfect, so the Probably the best man-made pump can only lift water about 25 feet, okay? That's why. It's because that's the, the biggest pressure difference that can be generated before water cavitates is, is that much. And that lift is about 32 feet. In order to generate a bigger pulling force, a bigger pressure differences, the the psi p in the water column has to go negative, and that's what happens in trees.